other Aquarium Academy episodes. Today we are going to be doing one of our Aquarium Lives. So we're going to be talking to Captain Joe and exploring the very specific topic of camouflage. So have you heard that word before? If you haven't, don't worry, because we're going to be exploring what that means. So if during today's program, you do have any questions, any thoughts that you want to share with us, any observations, we do have a live text line um, that you can feel free to use. And that live text line you can see is on the screen. That number is 562 286 one Eight three eight. So once again, you can send in any of those thoughts, any of those questions that you may be wondering about this live text line. If you are watching this program after it aired live, so after 1030 in the morning on August 30th, you can still send in your questions and observations. But instead of using this live text line, you're going to want to use this email, which is live at lbaop.org. It is ensures that we'll for sure see your questions or your observations observations and respond in a timely manner. But once again, if you are watching live with us today, um, you are going to want to use this text line that we have right here on the screen. Um, and like I mentioned, friends, today we're going to be doing one of our Aquarium Live episodes and we'll be meeting Captain Joe. So maybe you've tuned in before, but if you haven't, let's go ahead and say hi to Captain Joe. Um, hi, Captain Joe. Are you swimming? Well, hello there, boys and girls. It's Captain Joe here, and yes, as a matter of fact, I am swimming underneath water right now inside the tropical galley. I've finally mastered my technique of underwater breathing, just like my idol, the harbor seal. Oh, really? Well, then how are you talking underwater? It doesn't matter. Anyways, let's just go ahead and observe some fish. Okay, so let's take a closer look at these fish that you can see within our tropical gallery. What do you notice about oh, hi, them? Hi, Captain Joe. Hey. How strange. She must be able to hold her breath underneath water as well. Captain is. Joe, I don't think you're actually swimming. All right, you caught me. But someday I will be able to hold my breath underwater like my idol. Anyways, we are here in the tropical gallery, and I do have to tell you, boys and girls, we have a lot of very, very colorful fish here today. That's awesome. What do they use their colors well, that is for? That's a very good question again. And we might as well do what we always do. Let's investigate. All right. Looks like we're going to dive on in and investigate. Thanks, Captain Joe. So like I mentioned, friends, um, we're going to be talking all about camouflage today. So Captain Joe made a really great point of pointing out how a lot of the fish in this tropical habitat are really colorful. And that's because when we're looking at the tropical habitat, a lot of these different corals, these coral reefs that they live in are going to be really colorful. I'm going to see if my friend Talia, who's joining me today, if she can put up one of our live cameras or one of our coral exhibits and we can take an even closer look at these colors. Because colors will be really, really important for these animals to blend in. So that's what that word camouflage means. It's that they can blend in with their surroundings. And sometimes that's just because of the color they are or if they can even change color as well. So here we have one of our live cameras here at the aquarium. So what do you notice about it? All the colors, right? So you can see there's different pinks, there's different purples, there's greens, there's blues. And if you look at the fish in here, there are those colors as well. You can see purple and yellow and orange. Some of the fish are blue. You can see the tail over a parrotfish. And just like that, all those colors that are all over their bodies. So that's really, really going to help these animals being able to blend in. And now I have a question that we've talked about that word camouflage is why do you think that's important for different animals? And we'll explore this question as we go on through our program today and talk with Captain Joe, but they will definitely be using the camouflage 
technique in so many different ways and it can help them in so many different ways as well. Also, the shape of their bodies can really help them depending on where they're living and where they're hanging out. So, a great animal that's an example of that is actually an animal that's a little bit more local to us, which is the moray eel. So, the moray eel has a very specific body shape for it to be able to live where it does. So, you can find these eels in lots of different rocks and caverns. Sometimes they'll find rocks and they'll find that there's a hole in the rock and they'll fit their body in there. Because eels are like, they remind me of giant noodles in a way. <laughs> so, the way that they swim around around from one side to the other um, they move a lot like a noodle or a lot like a snake um, within the water and having those nice bodies that are flexible but also they're a little thick but um, pretty skinny that's how they're able to fit in all of these different areas um, so we do have a couple of eels here at the aquarium however I do want to say it can be rather hard to spot them because I do like to hide in those holes um, that I've been talking about so I'll let you get a good look at this moray eel right now. And these moray eels are going to be living in the kelp forest. So in a lot of colder water. And if you've been in the kelp forest before, if you've gotten a chance to see one, or if you live here locally around Long Beach in Southern California, you're probably very familiar with kelp. Sometimes you can find it washed up on the shore when you visit the beach. Other times, if you're swimming out in the water, you'll feel it really slimy, something really slimy rub against you. That's most likely kelp. You might call it seaweed. Um, but these eels are also very, very good at camouflaging with the kelp. And here is one of our blue kelp forest exhibits, our blue cavern exhibit. And you can see some of this kelp over here. So when we we're looking at that eel, you might have noticed it was that green coloration, green, yellowish. So it blending in with these pieces of kelp over here, especially like this one over here, that coloration will really, really help it. We're all doing a really great job by using our eyes to make observations. So now that we've developed and practiced some of these techniques, I want to go ahead and play a game. So we'll get our game up. Ooh, so this is our game, Can You See Me? So what animal is hiding behind the bubbles? Can you spot it? Or is its camouflage too good? I'll give us 30 seconds to challenge you to see if you can spot it. If you're watching this with someone, you can try and work together. If you already know, you can shout it out. What animal is it? You can also just say it in your mind. You can always text us if you spot the animal with that number 562-286-1838. What animal are we looking at? Are you ready? Okay, let's do a drum roll. Let's see what animal. <gasps> An octopus. Did, were you able to spot the octopus when all the bubbles are covering it? It's doing a really great job blending in with its surroundings, isn't it? So you can see what colors do you see all over. Not only on the octopus, but also in the background. So we're seeing some brown, some yellows, kind of like an orange color too. And you can see the great job it's doing with blending in with all the rocks under it. The only kind of visible spot will be its eyeball. But apart from that, they are the masters of camouflage is what octopuses are often um, referred to as. Just because they're so good at changing their colors, they're even able to change their textures. So what does that mean that they're able to change their texture? So the octopus right here looks really nice and smooth. So one second they can look really nice and smooth. But then if the next, if they go on a really bumpy surface, like a really bumpy rock, they're able to turn their bodies really, really bumpy to help them camouflage even more. Which brings me back to my question. Why do you think it's important for animals like octopus to camouflage or like the eel we were talking about? Hmm. 
it helps keep them safe, right? So it can help keep them safe from different predators so they don't get spotted. If they need to get away from something, that camouflage can really, really help them. So as we explore more and more animals today, um, you're going to need to be able to think about, hmm, so it helps keep them safe, right? And we can definitely see how some animals are really, really great at camouflaging. So now that we've been able to um, play our game, we're going to go check back in with Captain Joe. Let's go see what he's up to. Hey, boys and girls. I'm here at the Tropical Gallery observing, hiding out using camouflage. What I found out is that these animals have many different colors and they use them for many different reasons. So, let's go observe and find out more. Okay, Captain Joe, sounds good. So, he was talking about the butterfly fish, right? So let's take a closer look at this butterfly fish. Ooh, so here we go. This is what the real life butterfly fish looks like. So let's see. What do you notice about it? The yellows and the whites, right? What about its body? Does it have any camouflage? Hmm, yeah, right? So this butterfly fish is one second going to be living in that coral reef. So it being yellow and white is going to be really helpful. You can see its body shape too. It looks kind of like a regular fish back here, but then its mouth is like, it's more like a straw-like figure, which will help them when they're eating different like algaes and different little tiny planktons and everything. But one thing I really want to call your attention to is this right here. This is what you call a false eye spot. So let me point out the butterfly fish's real eye, and you can see its real eye right here. But this is a false eye spot. So this is a different thing that animals can have in order to stay safe and avoid predators and confuse their predators as well. So this false eye spot tends to be bigger than their actual eye. And the reason for that is, let's say I was a bigger fish, right? And I was swimming on by. And I, was, I noticed that there was a butterfly fish. But then I see this bigger false eye spot and I think it's its eye. I want to get confused and I'm going to think this butterfly fish is actually a lot bigger than what it truly is. So I'm going to be like, uh, no thank you butterfly fish. I'm going to go ahead and leave because I don't know if you can actually eat me because you look so big. So this is something you can find on a lot of different animals that are so many different sizes because this false eye spot can really help them stay safe and avoid those predators. Um, so that is a really, really great technique. Another way that this false eye spot can work is if an animal is swimming on by, I'm turning the wrong way, if an animal is swimming on by and they see this false eye spot, they're not going to be able to tell what the backside of the fish is sometimes. So they'll be like, uh, no, he sees me coming, I'm going to go ahead and leave them alone and they'll swim on away too. So you can see these adaptations and these different ways to camouflage can really help these animals out. So the butterfly fish is a really great example. So now that we've spoken about our butterfly fish, let's check in with Captain Joe. I think he's found someone who knows a little bit about animals and the way they use camouflage to hide and even sneak up on their prey. I wonder who he found. Hey boys and girls, I'm here with our seahorses and I found my friend Jin. She's an aquarist here at the aquarium. Jin, what are some of the things you do here at the aquarium? I do a lot of things to take care of the animals here, including feeding and a lot of cleaning. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. Now, we're here with the seahorses and we do know that they have very long faces and very curly tails, but we're learning about colors today. Can you tell us a little bit how they use color in their environment? Absolutely. Seahorses use color to camouflage or to hide within their environment. And because they're so well hidden, they can sneak up on their prey. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> now, our sneaking sounds very cool. Are there any other animals in the aquarium that sneak up on their prey? Absolutely. We have a lot. They are very hard to find, so we really need to use your eyes. I suggest you go ahead and head down the Blue Cavern and look at our giant sea bass. Mm, giant sea bass. I think that's something we definitely need to investigate. I agree, but first let's look at the seahorses a little bit more. Seahorses are really, really fascinating animals that are super interesting. 
So let's take a closer look. So here you can see this really great video of the seahorses. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds just to make some observations. What do you notice about their body shape? What do you notice about their color? What do you notice about the way that they move? Ooh, there's some different things going on now. So we are looking at some seahorses, and now this is a sea dragon that we're looking at. So they look very similar, but they do have a couple of different body functions. When it looks like in this video, our seahorses are getting fed. So you can see the way that they like to eat and the way that they're able to use those mouths and that body shape to their advantage. So they have very nice and flexible bodies. And you can see when they're babies, like in this one, they're very, very small, but you can still see some of that tail right here. But definitely as they get older, that prehensile tail, which is the type of tail that they have, will definitely get a lot stronger. And those tails for seahorses will be really important because that's how they're able to grab onto different things out in the ocean, whether that be plants and, rub and wrapping themselves around a plant or different rocky surfaces, those tails can he help keep them nice and sturdy. However, in that video, we also had a sea dragon. And like I said, very, very similar to a seahorse. But one main difference between a seahorse and a sea dragon is that sea dragons aren't able to wrap themselves around things the way that seahorses are. Um, their tail structure is very different um, just because of the way it's shaped and the different prisms and different things like that that you can find within those tails. So that really flexible body that we notice it will be really important, especially for sea dragons, especially with the current and everything. Having that flexible body can definitely help them navigate the ocean. Another thing about their body that definitely stands out to me about seahorses and sea dragons are those mouths that they have. So just like the butterfly fish that we saw, right? The seahorses also have that long tube-like mouth, and that's how they're able to suck the, the little shrimps out of the water the different types of plankton so they just go and they're able to suck things up with those uh, mouths so you can see how all these different body parts are really really important um to seahorses and to sea dragons and that definitely helps them survive so i want to go ahead and now that we've spoken about seahorses, is I want to go ahead and play another game with all of us today. So let's see. We'll get our game up right now. Ooh, and we're going to be doing puzzle time. So let's see. Put on your detective glasses. Hmm, what do you notice? What colors do you see? So... These things down here are standing out to me. They're kind of long and noodly. Can you guys tell I like noodles? I like to compare a lot of things to noodles, <laughs> but they look long and noodly, kind of like a beige-ish yellow color. Ooh, but we can see some different colors right here. Some whites and some orange and some black. Hmm, what do you think you're looking at? And friends, I do want to say, just go ahead and ignore this phone number right here um, because it is not correct. Um, so we have our phone number that we're using to cover the wrong one, which is 562-286-1838. So if you want to text in as to what you think we're looking at, I'll give us a couple of seconds to do so. Hmm, what animal are we looking at? You can see those different colors that we pointed out, but I'm going to give you a couple of seconds just to be able to think about it. Have you ever seen an animal before that's the colors orange and white? So let's see, now that you have, may have had a minute to think about it, you've made your guesses, let's reveal the rest of the puzzle and see what animal we're looking at today. <gasps> more of it's being revealed. There's more than one in the picture, what? We're looking at clownfish, which you may have guessed 
because there is a very, very popular <laughs> clownfish out there, which we might all be aware of. So clownfish are just like Nemo from Finding Nemo, right? So that's how you probably were able to figure it out. So you can see this orange color, this white color, and I didn't even know there was more than one in the picture, but we have two clownfish hanging out in a sea anemone. So they do like to hang out in those sea anemones um, quite often because that is their home. They're going to be living in those anemones. So maybe you had a chance to figure out what it was. So good job, explorers. And now that we've done our puzzle, let's go check back in with Captain Joe and see what is going on with him. Hey, Captain Joe, you found our blue cavern exhibit. Wait, Captain Joe, where did you go? Oh, there you are. What are you doing? <gasps> yeah, I'm hiding in this pretend seaweed or kelp to blend in with our kelp habitat. Oh, did you find the giant sea bass? I sure did. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now, boys and girls, here is one of our giant sea bass. Sometimes in the ocean, instead of blending into a rock, an animal will try to blend into the shadows or into the water itself. Now the dark mottled color of the giant sea bass allows it to lurk in the dark parts of the kelp forest, only to lunge forward when a small prey fish comes near and sucks it right into its mouth. The camouflage, paired with its careful, slow swimming, make the giant sea bass almost ninja-like in its stealth even though it can eventually grow it away over 600 pounds. Now, boys and girls, these are just some examples of how these animals use color in their environment. I'm going to send it back to you in the studio, and you're going to learn a little bit more about animals and how they use their color in the wild. Okay, thanks, Captain Joe. I wonder, are there any animals that use stripes instead of spots? Hmm. I'm pretty sure I saw a striped animal in the Tropical Pacific Gallery. How about you meet me there? Okay, sounds like a plan. So, like Captain Joe mentioned, there are animals like the giant sea bass who are going to be using those spots to blend in within the kelp forest, right? And that darker coloration that the giant sea bass has of those grays and blacks are definitely going to be able to help them with that. And we've explored so many different animals today, friends. And a lot of these animals actually live here at the aquarium. So it's really, really important that we're able to understand and also able to take care of these different animals. So now I want to go ahead and talk about a very special place that we have here at the aquarium, which is our Molina Animal Care Center. So you can see that is this building right on over here at the aquarium. And this is where we're able to take care of all these animals. If any animals ever get sick, if they ever need surgery, if they need to be kept a closer eye on, they'll actually come to our Molina Animal Care Center and work with some of our team here. So now I want to introduce you to one of our team members, Shara Seals, and she's going to talk to us a bit more about what goes on at our Molina Animal Care Center. Welcome, Ocean Rangers. I'm Shara Seals. And I'm here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our veterinary hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I work with Dr. Lance Adams, our veterinarian, and we take care of all of these animals. Our animals can't exactly tell us what's wrong with them. So we use special tools to help us figure out what's going on on the inside. Here's our ultrasound. This allows us to view the internal organs of an animal, like the kidneys, or the liver, or even the stomach. We use this probe here with a little bit of this gel, and we run it over the body part that we want to look at. This screen right here will show us a picture of what we're looking at. It'll show us the inside. We use this ultrasound on one of our harbor seals, Shelby. Shelby is a mom. She's had two pups here at the aquarium in the past few years, Bigsby and Toby. We knew she was pregnant because we used this on her. We placed this probe with a little bit of the gel on her big belly and we could see a seal pup inside of her. 
This is just one of the tools that we use to see inside the animals. Let's take a look at some others. This is our x-ray. Unlike the ultrasound that takes pictures of soft tissues and organs, we use this to take pictures of bones. We place the animal on the plate here and we snap the x-ray. We can take pictures of certain body parts or the entire body. After we take the x-ray, it displays on this screen. Dr. Adams uses this and many other tools to help figure out what's wrong with our animals here at the aquarium. This way, we can keep all of our animals healthy. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Shara, for giving us a chance to explore our Molina Animal Care Center and all of the different tools that they use from different types of x-rays that allow us to see the animals' bodies, make sure that they're really nice and healthy, to multiple different tools. So that was a lot of fun, friends. But now, I want to check back in with Captain Joe because he kind of left us hanging. Um, and I heard that he has found a striped animal. So let's go take a look at our tropical gallery with him. Hey boys and girls, so these are the animals with black and white stripes I was talking about. These are our banded sea crates. We have one right there and they are very venomous animals and they use their coloration to give a warning off to other animals. They basically say, look out, I'm quite dangerous. They're very, very cool. Yeah, thank you so much, Captain Joe. I know there are a few other animals with stripes too. So... We had a chance to see one of those striped animals uh, that Captain Joe hung, hung, held up for us. Sorry, friends. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And we've seen so many different patterns and so many different colors as well. Um, we are all out of time now, friends. So I do want to go ahead and just say bye to Joe. And then we'll go ahead and part ways today. So let's see. Bye, Captain Joe. Thank you so much for everything. Oh, let's do our salute. Boop, boop, boop. Bye, Captain Joe. So once again, friends, thank you so much for tuning in this morning with us. And hopefully you've learned a lot about camouflage and seen how so many different animals are able to use camouflage to their advantage to keep them nice and safe out there in the ocean. Bye, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.